Hi, I'm Jose Medina. I'm currently a 26-year law enforcement veteran and active participant in SWAT tactics. I'm also a training consultant with my own business, Awareness Protective Consultants, Team APC, where we conduct high-end training for police SWAT teams, military, and close quarter civilian use of force self-defense. Today we're going to talk a little bit about the John Wick 1 movie and the cons of some of the tactics used in the film. So first shooting scene, we'll call it shooting scene one, where the Russians enter John Wick's home. Very tactically um, savvy the way they move in. However, uh, he's waiting for them. Think about you, yourself being in your home and some dudes breaking in. Those knuckleheads, they were illuminating themselves with their own flashlights. So that gave John Wick the ability, because he had no flashlight. So if those guys' lights were off, you know, he was kind of shooting at uh, possibly in real world unknown. But reality, those guys kept illuminating, so they kept illuminating. So whether that was the intention of the producers that let these knuckleheads constantly illuminate themselves, so we can just simply pick pick them apart. Um, and one of the areas that we talk about is where I see is, you know, the shooting platforms. Although really good, there's a scene where he shoots back at the, the bad guys. He does a uh, judo, uh, jujitsu type roll on the guy, and as he takes the guy down, he starts dragging him across maybe like the kitchen floor about a few feet. And he already has a shot to put the execution kill on it, but he decides to point towards another guy down the hallway. And there's a pregnant pause where he could have easily just killed that first guy instantaneously and then shot the second guy. He shoots the guy down the long hallway before he even presents himself. Then he decides to shoot the, the guy in his arms. So basically, you drag a guy all that way, he might as well just execute him right there. And from that point on, we're going to go into the shooting scene two, which is at the nightclub where he's looking for the suspect, the scumbag, the douchebag, whatever you want to call him, <laughs> determine your movies, how you want to use it, uh, where the guy who killed his dog. Um, as he goes in, the, the, the shooting platforms again, talking about the uh, toes, heels pointed towards the threat area, these guys really well coordinated, especially John Wick. Uh, at one point though, as he's taking these guys down, he sees the scumbag in, in the hot tub pool, looks at him, they make, make eye exchange, he executes one guy, all of a sudden the guy's in his little towel running up the stairs, as he's running up the stairs, Wick is killing all these guys accurately, and then all of a sudden there's one guy's in the towel, uh, running up the stairs, and Wick can't get one shot accurately to hit this guy, not even to graze him, not even to, even to put a, a, a glass mark shrapnel in his face, nothing. Like, I think that was kind of where it throws me off, because I shoot through glass and I tell cops all the time, you know, Lot, majority of your rounds, especially AR-15 rifles, um, a lot of these even, you know, the, the uh, 40 caliber, 45, so those things are going to rip right through. Uh, even 9 millimeter, if you double tap glass, like stuff's going to just shrapnel up so, and it's going to penetrate eventually or it's going to go downward maybe or maybe into a left or right arc. But it's going to do its job, it's going to do something and it just, it just feel like anything was shooting through glass, it was kind of like and showing that I guess the whole the whole scene of glass was all bulletproof in my opinion the way they made it look I think it was a little bit that prop was a little bit goofy but then as uh, they make start making their way into the different parts of the club a lot of a good CQB shooting um, weapon retention stuff but then uh, he's doing uh, on the second floor of the scene he actually he's actually fighting one of the, the bouncers bodyguards and he once again he does a judo roll with an MMA hold. Um, as he does that, he's actually trying to shoot down the hallway, long range with a crowd of people, and he's accurately placing these shots. But reality is, you know, even the, the best SWAT cops in the world, it's almost impossible to get that off. Um, just by doing a roll with a, hand, a handgun in your hand, uh, you got to practice that a million times and hope you get it one, right one time. Uh, so that's kind of a gig there. And then he gets into a fight with, with one of the hand-to-hand -hand combat guys from the movie that's pretty like his adversary. And at one point, the guy gets the best of John Wick and picks him up and throws him down to the second, uh, to the first floor of the dance floor. He hits the deck on the dance floor, a little beat up a little bit, and all of a sudden he reaches for his lower back, gets his backup gun, which is a short pistol, and he looks up, sees the douchebag up there, the scumbag, and all of a sudden he pops up one center mass shot right through that glass with the guy standing. And I mean, literally that round, if anything, should have did it through and through and some shrapnel should have caught that guy in his eye. Realistically, you know, they should have done that type of scene to, to send that mark. But at 1,500 feet per second average of a bullet round coming out of a barrel, like that thing should have happened. There's no way that guy should have been able to matrix away from that, that shot fired. Then uh, we'll go into the, the third scene, which is that John Wick makes his way into the church. 
uh, and then great action shot where he he makes it, he opens up uh, the, uh, the AR-15 platform, which is the, the rifle, shoots the, the priest, and then he starts doing his movements from left to right, right to left, uh, shooting all the bad guys. But at one point, there's a guy on the second floor of the chapel looking down at him, and in reality, ladies and gentlemen, we always say high ground usually wins the battle, and that guy is sitting there high ground. Not one time does he get uh, able to get a round off on John Wick, where Wick was able to turn around, look upward, and get the shot off on the guy. So there, I would say realistically wise, out of all those reactionary targets that he's shooting at, that, sec that high ground guy definitely had a beat on him. You know, if that was me, I definitely would have got a shot off and, and either wasted him or dropped him real quick. But obviously they had to flip it around to make it look really dramatic. Uh, and then coming into the outboard side of the, that shooting scene with the church uh, where the, the main mob boss comes out, um, they're in a parking lot scene that's kind of like the one of the creme de la cremes there. Uh, he has the AR-15 rifle where he goes on attack mode. And as he's, as the shootouts continuing, 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 there's a certain segment there where uh, he comes up behind the Suburban and all of a sudden he just steps his body out and both legs are hanging out there, femoral arteries are hanging out there and he's just engaging gun battle with these guys and the guys are ripping rounds. And you talk multitude of rounds, a realistic person would have used that Suburban, Tahoe, whatever, that the AB frames, all the frames and the tires, all right? They would have used those tires, rolled the bodies out just to not get any extra penetration on the lower uh, portions of the body. Um, and he would have rolled on, just tapped those dudes left and right and like, like Tic Tacs. Um, but instead he stood out there. In reality, if I am returning fire, I would hit his legs and his femoral arteries. He would have bled out in a New York minute. So again, uh, for those who like to practice cover position, use, use vehicles for cover, you know, that's a great thing to do. And you don't want to stand out there just like those, those game shows that you do or the gaming. You don't want to stand out there all day and take rounds, okay? Um, then that, that's pretty much the gig there uh, where he just stood out there like an open silhouette. Coming towards the last scene uh, where the, the final scene where he's chasing the guys off the uh, loading dock areas of the, the pier. Uh, pretty much there's two areas that I saw that are kind of Kind of hinky, I mean, unless you're a lottery winner. Uh, he, he goes after the bad guys and he, he backs up as his car's all mangled. And as he, he backs up, he hits a guy, a guy rolls over his car and he does what I call the rainbow effect where he has the handgun on his car. Now again, a lot of us, we teach guys and gals how to shoot from the vehicles. Um, we're shooting through the wind sh windshields and the doors. However, uh, for him to rainbow and arc that gun, ba 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 ba, and get those lucky shots off, and you can see the, the guys getting hit as with the rounds as he's rolling over the hood of the car. Uh, I'm kind of like, man, he must have played a lottery on that one because that's kind of like non-realistic. Although, you know, if, I guess if you practice it at home a lot with your friends, that might be a good thing. But rea reality is, to arc that rainbow uh, pistol like that, there's no way that's going to happen. He's ripping down in one scene. He's ripping down. The, uh, the path down the pier and one of the bad guys is waiting behind a, an anchor barrier, uh, some kind of a steel object, waiting for, for the ambush. The car goes ripping past as it rips past. Wick does his fast uh, 90 degree turn on the vehicle, which is pretty cool. I mean, a lot of police are taught that. We taught that in evasive driving maneuvers, stuff like that. He punches that gun out and basically gets the shot off on the bad guy. Uh, I give him kudos for the for the arm placement, locking the arm out. However, to do a 90 degree spin while that thing's going, is pretty much uh, dead in the water in my opinion. So that's pretty much where I see a lot of the, the kind of the negatives and the cons of the movie. But again, it's for the Hollywood effect, so I get it. Uh, and is it realistic for like a criminal essentially have this kind of high level training? Yeah, uh, unfortunately in the world we live in, there are people out there that, that are training these type of movies. Uh, these type of movies are a recipe for a lot of people. This and obviously the, the gaming back at home with the, the virtual reality type stuff, it's, it has become uh, really an amazing uh, enemy of, of the law enforcement community to pr protect the, the lives of innocent because uh, there are people out there training like this. Uh, the, the, the downside to them is that when the bullets are flying their way realistically, take an active shooter, when the bullets are ripping multiple cops shooting at somebody who has a gun like this, um, nine times out of ten that bad guy is either going to eat their own bullet or they're going to take fire and they're going to retreat because it's just the overwhelming force realistically 
uh, it's too much for one person to handle. Have you ever heard of stories of like, you know, like squads of just, you know, highly professional killers assaulting houses like this, like, you know, just criminals doing this? Yeah, there, there, there are. Um, there's actually reported cases, a lot of home invasions. A lot of these guys, or these suspects, I shouldn't say guys, can be women, um, suspects, they go in and they know uh, how to blow, you know, breach a door, whether how to kick certain spots, how to shotgun breach at certain hinge points, uh, if they can get in that house, and they're, they're, they're capable of doing this type of damage. Um, not, me, not as, in my opinion, not as fast, uh, in a sense, but nine times out of 10, they're going to these homes, if they're doing a home invasion, they are gagging people, they are zip tying people, and they're, they're taking what they want, maybe executing some of these people. And you hear there's quiet stories across the nation and around the world that this happens. So there are, you know, again, you know, Hollywood takes a lot of what reality has and they just kind of juice it up into a movie, but there's a lot of mercenary type people out there and uh, they're getting paid big dollars for it. And then uh, let's hear kind of like a, a Jose Medina like rating of the movie. Like, did you enjoy it? Do you think it, like yeah, just let's hear your words. You can get like an overall takeaway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. For me, I mean, it was a, it was actually I loved it. I give it if it, it was a, out of a ten, I gave it, I give it eleven in my opinion because it's refreshing for what's out there. Uh, you know, a lot of these movies. You know, I'm a tactical guy, so it was nice for a change to actually see a guy who goes into you know this world where he's trying to have find peace in his life, and then somebody brings out the, the monster in him. It's kind of it kind of relates in some of us SWAT guys where we find peace at home and then when we have to go do our raids, you know, you got to go out there, you have to you have to change your mindset. So it was nice to see the, the mindset type change movie and then also to see the tactics with the handguns and the rifles, uh, the, the, the shooting platforms. And uh, I just think overall it was a great uh, fit for guys like myself, you know, alpha males who love something different other than one person shooting with a gun, one handgun and never reloading and just constantly shooting, shooting, shooting with one, that one gun, you say to yourself, man, that dude has never reloaded once, or this is realistic, and I, that's what I liked about it. I think it was, it was good to, I think it was almost like custom made for alpha male guys and gals. All right, so, so my, my consulting business, my official name is Awareness Protective Consultants. We go by the name of Team APC. We've been in business for over 16 years, and it was, I started with where I wanted to add a vision. I trained law enforcement, and I wanted to give law enforcement more reality-based training 16 years ago. That was kind of my mantra. And from there, we went from training police into specialized teams such as SWAT. Uh, we got invited to train a lot of many special forces teams, uh, individual teams from the Deltas, the Green Berets, and Navy SEALs. So we had the, the honor of training some of them with them. And then we, we've been overseas uh, training in Sky Marshal CQB, close quarter battle training uh, for uh, Sky Marshal training for protecting planes. So we've, we've done a lot of everything. And that's what our company's based off, the mantra is real world, real time, real training. And now you see reality is people use that phrase a lot as real, real, real time and real training. Basically your brain is the most important weapon system and that's what we try to teach people how to protect themselves and protect others. So that's kind of what we do. And, and in my website is apc360zone.com. And if you have any information or questions that you want to ask us, it's info at apc360zone.com. Well, Jose, thank you so much for sharing your expertise with us. Please check out his Facebook and Instagram. He has a lot of cool videos and articles on there from his training and classes that he runs. Also, we're going to be linking that down below along with his website. And guys, stay tuned for our next episode because he's going to be uh, coming back and breaking down everything right in the original John Wick film. And guys, there's actually a lot of things that the movie did get right. Well, guys, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. My name is Alan reminding you that life is a movie and you are the protagonist.